Because I got one witness in the house. The problem that Israel had in conclusion is that they did not take God at his word. My subject, don't mess up your season. Look at somebody and say, don't mess up your season. Tell somebody else, don't mess up your season. When you surround yourself with people that have become haters, haters are not born, haters are made. Some of y'all going through some stuff. And you've been through some stuff now. And sometimes the stuff that you deal with depresses you, stresses you. Why is God giving me this? Because some of y'all need to cut some cords. It's some people in your life that's attached to you that you need to cut loose until you get where you're going. Why do you say that? They, they don't need to be with you now because they're not good for you where you are. They feed you stuff that you don't need to eat. They put stuff on your mind that don't need to be there. You don't need nobody giving you negative when you're already going through negative. They're going to question you because you've been walking around blessed and talking about how good God is. And talking about how wonderful God is. And now that you're going through a dry season, they're asking you, where's your God now? How come you ain't overcoming this? Hey, don't worry about it. He go, I'm going to overcome it. He's just doing this now because he's preparing me for something better. And see, I've never been in this shape before. I've never been like this before. Which means that God is getting ready to do something. Because if I want a ridiculous blessing, I got to go through a ridiculous situation. The only way I can appreciate a ridiculous blessing is when I go through a ridiculous hell. And that's what I'm going through now. I'm going through some stuff that I don't think I should be going through. I'm dealing with some situations that I shouldn't be dealing with. But because I know who I am and I know God is on my side, some way, somehow, another, God's going to bring me out. And all of the haters going to have to step back and hate me more. Because where I am is not where I'm going. Because where I'm going is better than where I've been. If I had never been there, I wouldn't know how to appreciate where I'm going. You're attacking me where I am to keep me from my destiny. But the devil is a lie. Oh, when I get through going through this, I'm coming out with a better mindset. I'm coming out with more faith than I ever had. Because can't nobody do me like the Lord. I tell you to touch three people and say better, better, better. The devil want to keep you in this valley, but what he don't know, God already got some stair steps waiting for you to come out of that valley. And where God's getting ready to take you, the devil in hell can't stop it. He want to depress you where you are so you can't see where you're going. But the devil is a lie. Get rid of the spies that ain't got no faith. Get rid of the folk around you that's negative talking about we can't do it. They see the blessing, but they say you'll never get there. I see the grapes, I see the fruit, but I see the giants. I see the obstacles. Well, you're looking with the natural eye, but only Jesuit and Caleb are looking with eyes of faith. I remember what God said to Abraham. I remember what he reiterated with Isaac. I remember what he said when he talked to Jacob. I remember what he said when Joseph was in prison. I remember what he said when we were in the land of Egypt. He said that he was going to take us to a land that flows with milk and honey and he told us don't worry about the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hittites. Don't worry about none of them folk that's in your way because God said I'll deal with them. And if I said I'm going to bless you can't no devil in hell stop you. When you think you're weak, God said I'll make you strong. I'll give you the wisdom to speak to people that say they are baffled you can't nobody baffle you when God is on your side because the Bible says if I be for you who then can be against you can't no devil in hell stop your blessing that's why they go doing what they're doing to you because they know you're a blessed child but don't lose your praise don't you mess up your season by complaining but learn how to rejoice in the midst of hard times if you can pray when the wind is blowing if you can pray when the mountain
salt in his high. If you can praise him when your friends are few. If you can praise him when it don't seem like you're going to make it. Hold on to the promise of God. God, I'm your child. If I got anybody here to know you're a child of God. You ought to tell somebody I'm the Lord's child. If I'm his child, he got to take care of me. If I'm his child, he's obligated to take care of me. The devil can't stop it because you belong to God. And if you belong to God, no weapon. You could have on Sunday. No weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Grab somebody on the hand and say, you coming out of there. Because the Lord is on your side. You better tell them like you mean it. Say, you coming out of there. The Lord is on your side. Ow! Ow! Ah, he's on your side. Ah, he's on your side. Ow! He got to take care of you. Anybody know? The Lord got to take care of you. And hug somebody and tell them, don't panic. This is just a test. You need to just hug yourself and say, I won't panic. This is just a test. God's going to bring me through it. And I'm coming out more blessed than I ever been because he's on my side. You better tell somebody he's on my side. Yes, he is. How many of y'all know for a fact that it's been kind of rough for you? Raise both of your hands. It's been kind of rough, either mentally, physically, spiritually, professionally. It's been kind of rough, but you still got faith. You still got faith. You still believe. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and is the evidence of things not seen. My faith is still here. I just believe God's going to fix it for me. I don't know when, I don't know how, but I know he's going to fix it. If you believe that, if you know it, then I want you to lift both of your hands and tell the Lord it's in your hand. All I'm going to do while I'm waiting on you is praise you. Now I dare you to clap your hands and give him praise. Come on, you got to praise him like it's already done. Hallelujah.